I call upon all those that are walking the path of unconditional love and healing for self and others to join us in this sacred space to offer assistance and help in our healing journey. I call upon our ancestors, our spirit guides, our higher self, other entities, sentient beings, Sasquatch, all of them, all of those who walk this path of unconditional love and healing for self and others, I call upon you to enter this secret, sacred space and help and assist us on our journey. I call upon our ancestors, our spirit guides, our higher self, other entities and sentient beings, and all those that are walking the path of unconditional love and healing for self and others to join us in this sacred space to offer help and assistance on our journey to healing. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. I can feel it going right in my crown. Yeah. Really? That was, yeah, because it was bouncing around. That's nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, What's that look? huh? <laughs> no, everybody's, 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 everybody's kind of content now. Yeah. Kind of, kind of in a little dreamy. Yeah, I feel like We're real floaty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel real floaty. Like, yeah. uh, like a lot of stuff's left. Yeah, yeah. we did a lot of work. Today. I, I mean, even had to take my shoes off. I'm like, I feel oh, yeah. like I need to take all my clothes off, but I'm not going to do that right now. That's another workshop. No, really. I, oh, I believe you. I have, I have this whole thing about uh, even if you don't take your, shoe, your, your, your clothes off, but that is like a, one of the archetypes about body shame and it's like oh, yeah. why do we wear our clothes be, you know because we were shamed you know so the a idea kid will run the around I, naked, no problem yeah. huh? a little kid will run yeah, down no the problem nothing yeah <laughs> look even biggie's grounding he's got his front paws on them. yeah so but you know it's kind of like you know a cheap shot to but but really, like that's the reason why we like, like some people like the Norwegians or some people like that, the, the Swedish, they'll like hang out in their house naked all day because, you know, they're actually more comfortable naked in their house. But we we don't have that here. We got that shame. You know, you should put your clothes on. You're dirty or something like that. My mom was a naked mom house. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. she's from Europe, you know. Yeah, yeah. same Eastern here. in Europe, they just walk around naked. Yeah. At home. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, you know, but, but so, but those judgments and beliefs that come with our culture. Yeah. Affect us so much. I mean, the idea, like the idea, like now, if I even now, even though I like the, the idea of walking out the door, or walking around the block there's naked. No way there's no way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't yeah. have a problem with it. <laughs> you wouldn't have a problem with it because you're liberated. And I just, I've been going to nudist resorts right. since forever, so. Right. Yeah. Well, oh, I don't have no, I don't have a hard time going on a nude beach, but but uh, walking around in a neighborhood, you know, uh, yeah. where the they, yeah. we have this, they, everybody's got a they. What will they think? There's a guy, an old guy, he's probably in his 70s, and he rides a bike around with just a G-string. I saw him. He, he was goes, rolling down my neighborhood yeah, one day. Yeah, by here all the Yeah, time. he just had the little banana thing on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was crazy. I was like, what? Well, I wanted to ask you some, for some more feedback. When we were doing the... Uh, uh, the exercise, uh, finding your lion heart, uh, and it was a con there was a connection there, right? You could you could connect to your parents, or you could connect to your children. And uh, I wanted to tell a story about um, I want to tell a story, my personal story about me and my ex-wife and my son. When I first started doing this work, uh, I had a lot of issues with my ex-wife because basically I thought of her as uh, a female Hitler. And uh, she had the same astrology sign as Hitler, so uh, she's very fixed and very pushy kind of a Taurus lady. And then she left me because the reason why she left me when, and when Jason, my son, was only uh, 
few months old, six months old or something, was because it was her sexual childhood abuse. So she could handle being in a romantic relationship, but it, as soon as it became a mom and a dad, then her dad sexual assault issues came up. And so she couldn't handle that, and so she left. So here I am, you know, uh, again, I was a little saint, uh, realized person, and then the, the wife left me, and uh, so I held bitter resentment. So that, and that went on for years, that uh, because I wasn't doing any emotional work to do it to clear that. So, so he I, was meditating like six hours a day initially. Wow! And he had done all this other work that we see people do in spiritual things. Yeah, I was. I was think realized all guy because they've done all this stuff. They're so just like yeah. You know, yeah, they're you know they're like almost Jesus walking around. Oh right, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, for sure, I was a really high spiritual being, very high, but I wasn't emotionally mature, or and I was loaded up with my own shame and my own not self worth and all that kind of stuff that you had that everybody has. So then, when I started doing this work, you know, I was able to feel again. And then when I, when I really looked at the situation between me and my son and my wife, because I, I, he would come and stay with me in the summertime or stay with me on the weekends. And I was always polite and nice. I was very polite and nice to his mother. But in my belly, I hated her fucking guts. I hated that bitch, okay? But I would be nice and, hi, how are you doing? Oh, it's a nice day. I don't know. We'll take care of Jason and stuff. And, you know, he was like about 13 or 14 at the time. And uh, so what I actually felt into it, what I was doing was when he was with me, he could feel my resentment for her. So in order for him to be with me, then he, he had to like, uh, to love me, he had to hate her. And then when he was with her, she hated me because I was resenting her. She could feel my resentment, so she would say things about me. So when he was with her, he had to hate me and love her. And so basically between me and my ex-wife, we were pulling him apart. And so since she was sexually abused, she couldn't do any work. She didn't want to do any work. She didn't do anything like that. She didn't even want to go to talk therapy. So I knew I had to heal everything on my side. So what I did is I started working on it, working on it, and you know, beat a lot of pillows, and then I killed her in my imagination, and I got mad at my, then I, was my, my mother and her, her mother who abandoned me, let, you know, and, and, uh, and other girlfriends and stuff, anybody who'd ever hurt me, all the women I just, I worked on it, got angered, did all that kind of stuff. And I did that for about a good three months, just working on that, my relationships, the mother and her as the mother and the wife issues. And uh, finally, uh, it, just, it just came a time when, when she called me up and it was, like, it was like it was all gone. And she started talking about how much better Jason is doing in school because he was in a boarding school at the time, like a hippie, hippie boarding school in Asheville, which was kind oh, of a cool okay. thing. Yeah. And, uh, and then next time I saw Jason, it was like that whole... I have to hate her to love you, or I have to hate you to love her. That was all gone, see? And this, is, and this was, he was in another state, and she was in another part of town. So by me doing my work on my side, it healed her and it healed him to bring it much back closer into a, uh, into a nat normal, a normal, natural thing that he could survive in and he could thrive in. So I wanted to, sh to show you that it's not a joke when you go in there and you feel your pain and then you connect it to your parents and to your children and to your relatives and then you go out, you can go out to all of it, Austin and then you can go out to the, all of the United States and go out to the whole world and that's how you can build up enough compassion to be this, the compassion of Christ or the compassion of Buddha to be connected to everyone's pain. And, and to be able to heal your pain and connect your healing to everyone's pain. This is very profound stuff. And it, I, and it really works. It's not just me that's done this. 
other people have done this too, where they, they heal themselves and their child miraculously changes, you know? Yeah. If you have the image of your child as a drug addict or somebody like that, when you heal all the issues around that, it opens the door for them to be their natural self. If we look at our children or our parents as, as you know, crazy or hurtful, then that's the reflection that they get back and that's what they'll be. So you have to release all that stuff. You release it inside in the imagination. You release all that stuff so that they're a clean slate. And that allows them to be a clean slate. They don't have to be the angry mother or they don't have to be the rebellious child. You see, because that's only that, it, you're holding that image, even though they may have started it. But you hold that image of them and then it forms them. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. If you say, oh, my, there's something wrong with my child, there's something wrong. And that's one of the things that my uh, ex-wife used to do with my son, Jason. She, because there was something wrong with her, she saw that there was something wrong with him. The number one message she got, and she would take him to counselors. Mm -hmm. She would take him to this therapist and stuff and make him do this and all these kind of things. His whole life as a, as a you know, teenager, that's what he was getting. You know, and then he would then uh, when he got older and he came to me, and I I started just with what I said to you people. There's nothing wrong with you. You're infinite and immortal, and nothing can be wrong with you. All this stuff can just go, and it changed his life because his main message from his mother, unconsciously, was there's something wrong with you, and this confused him. So he thought and he began living like there was something wrong with him. Mm -hmm. And it took him a while, it took him about a year or two before he really got to the point where there is, he realized that there is nothing wrong with him. And it's really just a message from his mother because there's something wrong with her that she hasn't dealt with. You see how that works? Oh, I know. And this is, this is why uh, I wanted to put this basically out there on tape, that the number one reason for doing this work is your kids. It's the number one reason, because your kids, your family. Because what you do, they feel. Mm -hmm. What you don't do, they feel. So all of our years of suppression, all of our years of pretending to be nice or pretending to be okay, that's all fake. So they will love you anyway, but then it's like, but they're so fake, you know? So to be real, to be authentic, and also to be loving, that's, uh, that's one of the great gifts of language lessons of the heart. Yeah? And we all had a little taste of that today. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That was one exercise of one day. So you can do it on yourself. If you, go out and look at, you go out in the park and do that same exercise, you know, until it's gone. Until all your, all your parents' stuff is gone. Your husband and wife stuff is gone. Your issues that you have with God is gone. Your issues that you have with any relatives is gone. When it's all gone, then what a gift, you know? Here's the thing about your children, is there is no way that they can live in this world and not get beat up. They will definitely get beat up. They will definitely get beat up and traumatized. But if they're connected to you and you've done your healing, mm -hmm then even after they get beat up, they'll know, well, you know what? My mom, when she was 40, or my mom, when she was 50, she did, she did her healing work and she changed her whole life. So that means I can do it too. So, okay, uh, and then they realize one day, you know, it's a, it all falls down on them. And then they will do their healing work. You can't ask for, you can't ask for a better gift. There is no higher gift. So even though the world may beat them up, at the end they'll know, well, if mom can heal, I can heal. You see? And the other side is, if mom represses, then I repress. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I can testify because my mom repressed and I repressed. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and I can, I did the same thing with Nadia therapy and all that. And then when I started healing my PTSD and anxiety, and like Nadia is just, yeah. just one life. It was like we were doing the work together. Exactly. It was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, let me show you how how this healing works. Here, come and sit right here. I want to hit you on camera. Who? You and me, we're going to do a little acting. Oh. 
It'll, take that it'll be simple. Hmm. Yeah, nice <laughs> come here so we can both get on the camera. Get real close. I'm going to feed you with a spoon. Can I have a spoon? There is no spoon. <laughs> I got one in my bag. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's close enough. Oh, where am I? <laughs> I have to go this way, I think. Okay. Okay. So, this is how, this, I'll show you how wounding happens. How we became so wounded. Yeah? So, I'm going to be the dad and you're going to be the baby. Okay. And you don't even know how to feed yourself. No, little no, baby, little no. baby, right? So I take the food, right? Go open it, oh, have some food. Open it, open it up. Uh, oh. Yeah. Right? And we do this. How long? A year? How long does it take for this? They pick up their own spoon. Huh? How long before babies pick up their own spoon? Oh. And start feeding themselves. Is it a year, two years, or one year? Oh, it's before two yeah. years. It's a year or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah? So, okay. At the end of the next year, then what happens? So I, I being the father, am feeding, right? And you don't, and then and you're playing with a spoon. So you play with a spoon, and then eventually you feed it yourself. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so I would say even before that, because they do grab the spoon. They do, they do this. Right? <laughs> they want to do, they want to, they want to do it. So what I'm doing to you, you learn how to do to yourself. Right? And then you feed yourself. Now, at the same time, I'm saying, you're making a mess. Stop doing that. Don't being messy or stop being making it, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So I am feeding you that. And then you turn around and you take that emotional spoon and you feed it to yourself. Oh. Just like we learn how to feed with ourselves with our own spoon. So I'm not good enough. Or I'm too messy. I have to control myself. You see, we internalize it. And that's as simple as it is. What was done to us, we do to ourselves. Yeah. And that's how it works. Okay. It, and it's this, it, it, because it's wrapped in a story and a memory, we don't see it. But that's how it, that's, that's as, as simple as, oh, you like that spoon. My spoon. Yeah, there you can is have no spoon. <laughs> there is no spoon. Thank you very much for the spending the spoon with your mind. Thank you very much for the thank you, thank you. Thank the you demonstration. Thank you. Only grandma say that you can make a mess. But yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but yeah. when I say in language lessons, I must have said it a hundred times. When we get told fifty-six thousand times, no. No, don't cry. No, don't make a mess. No, don't come out of the house naked. No, 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 no. In a lot of different ways. No, you can't go out and play. No, you can't play with your friends. No, you have to stay and cook. You have all the stuff. Yeah? It's all the safety. No, don't stick your finger in that light socket. Yeah. It's still a no. It's still a no. But that, and, then, and then what happens is all that gets internalized. When there's a right amount of impress, a pressure, you know, right amount of... Uh, uh, you know, like you spilled the milk and that one day you got told no and then, and then you started crying over the spilled milk because of all the traumas of the no's, right? Yeah. Then you internalize it. It's just as simple as that. So you're feeding yourself your own denials. You're feeding yourself your own judgments. You're feeding yourself your own guilt. And you're feeding yourself your own shame. And we don't see it that way. We see it as our, you know, we see it as some other, that, that, that we see that it's something wrong with us, we'll have to be corrected or whatever it is. But uh, that's, that's what we're up against. And it's, we're walking on eggshells, basically. Just yeah. worried about something yeah. out of line, yeah. doing something wrong. And you don't want to feel judged, you don't want to get, get guilt or the belt. A lot of people just don't get the belt or the back of the hand. It depends on Thanks. if you got good parents. You know, a good parents maybe give you the belt and a bad parents give you the fist. <laughs> so that's, and this goes on in our culture. Other cultures are not like that. The other cultures may have more taboos about other things, but we 
tend to be very overprotective about our, our children and, and make them be like little soldiers. If you, look, if you look at a prison system, right? You take a man, he had to get a crime, and you put him in prison. He has to wear prison clothes. He has to get up at a certain time. He has no choice in what to eat. And he has to go to bed at a certain time. How much he views TV is regulated. And if he steps out of line, he has to go to his room, solitary confinement. So when you start looking at it like that, there's almost no difference between the actual, if you wrote it out as a script, between living as a child in a house and living in a prison. The steps are just about the same. You know, he, a child gets told what to wear, gives what to eat, when to get up, when to go to sleep, what they can watch, what they can't do, whether, how much they can go out to the field or not to the field. So it's very much a conditioning kind of thing. And, and this is part of living in a society where we have a yard and it's not just open country where, you know, mom says go out and you're out for all day, you know, and you're just gone. But that's part of our culture is this over, over uh, conditioning, over conditioning, you know. We really can't even set the kids out anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what we didn't do, what we didn't do at the park was uh, The, what do you call it, the, uh, the fourth, the fourth uh, process was to talk to the parts of self. That's a nice one, and we can do that, we can do that uh, without a whole lot of energy, you know. So, we did, you all, everybody did some deep work, and, uh, so I want, you, well, I, want to, I want us to have to take this opportunity to check in with our parts and see how they're doing and how they're feeling like. Actually be a friend and try to get a little conversation going, a little love going. Yeah? Just all do it at the same yeah, time. It, yeah, it, it just go off by yourself and, I mean, stay with your own self and... Mm-hmm. <clears throat> does this look like a bite or does it look like poison ivy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could be. Could be poison ivy. Yeah, it just started Are you allergic? Yeah. It yeah. just started spreading. Well it doesn't spread unless you touch it, right? Well, yeah, that's why I just wanted to go wash my hands. Mm -hmm. Spirit, did you enjoy your day today? Hi, Spirit. How are you today? It was quite an adventure. Oh, How are you today? How are you today? How 
Okay, that's kind of a nice little, nice little treat. And like I, like I, like I was saying before, um, the number one, the number one thing about uh, internalizing, internalizing this work, what's so important about it, is once you get that, you will become the tuning fork. You become the perfect pitch tuning fork for your whole family. You know, and they, come, they, can, they, can, they can come to you and say, you're crazy, you're crazy. But they'll walk away knowing that you're right, because that, that vibration of truth is in you. There's no discord, there's no shame, there's no resistance, there's no judgment. You, know, you see what I'm saying? We have it inside us, that truth. We are the ring of truth. And that's what a gift that you can give yourself and you give to your whole family. Now, when it comes to family, don't tell, the, don't tell your children to do language lessons the heart. Don't tell your friends to do lesson, language lessons the heart. You say, this is what I did, but, th you know, and that's enough. It's because as soon as you start pushing this on somebody, then they're going to, you know, it's too much. But, so you do all the work inside of yourself, you know. You need to be that example. Yeah, that's all you can do. Really. You see you transform, and you're like, well, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and you don't, you don't like, you don't, you don't, you don't get triggered in the by the world so much anymore. Right. And you don't dive into the archons or the or the right. Illuminati. That's not that. Okay, that stuff's real. Okay, but I don't have to eat it. I don't right. eat that. Right? That's not my bread and butter. All the all the misery and the craziness in the world. That's not something that. I add on top of my already uh, pain debt, you know, that's what a lot of people do, yeah, so. I'm not really sure, what else? I'm glad you said that, because that's exactly what I wanted to um, tell my granddaughter's uh, mom, because um, my granddaughter that's 14 she's it she's been bullied all year round at the school and so she's just now t she told us and then my son told her when you go to a new school what happens is kids will be kids because my son told her that she said okay dad and I said me and my husband went to the school district and we went and we did everything what we could for my granddaughter to cry and say, Grandpa, you know, she didn't want us to do what we were doing. There's consequences for those actions that happened because she made it to the social. So they put her on social media and all this, this fighting and everything. Wow. And to get to the point was is that with Tracy, I tell her we have to trust Tr uh, Kelly because we have our own garbage being young mothers, getting pregnant, and um, if she's talking to a boy or 
somebody was smoking pot and you know Kelly was there. That's our garbage. That's our distress. So that's who I would was been checking on because now Tracy is feeling where's my daughter that hover person and, and I could see me and that's not what I I try to get her to understand that you did all those things uh -huh. um, don't bring that on to Kelly we have to trust and we have to we have to pray for you know for the protection the guidance and what we've given her you know that she wants her to come over here with us and I, when we went and spoke with Kelly, um, we asked her what did she want, um, and she said she wanted her mommy. So I understood that, you know. Yeah. And if she wants her mama, it has to be her mama giving her what her mother didn't give her. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, and that's what it is, and 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 in a way, that's what you that's what you did today when you were working on your mother issues. Mm -hmm is you you just killed you killed what you didn't want and that leaves room for what you do want and it's very important to do that because we have we get imprinted by what we don't want mm -hmm. my bad mother and so you remember your mother was bad to you or felt it felt bad to you your whole life but that has to end yeah you know it ends with you because you were the one who carried it you know, to 10 years old, 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old. You've been carrying it all that time, and that has to be killed. Kill it, because it's no longer true. It wasn't true then, and it's not true now. Right. Yeah? Yeah. When something happened a, a, two weeks ago, well, Kelly, uh, not something happened, Kelly cut her legs. Just, I still haven't seen it. Um, Tracy called her mother, and they, they recently bought so much, so much land. She sent it to her mother's. Her her parent, her other grandparents, were talking with her, and then we went out there, and we all four, each one of us talked to her, separate together. Uh -huh. Me and my husband, then her, their mother too. Um, but David and I, when we spoke to her, it was like, what is it that you know you're wanting do you want to it's okay for you to come and stay with grandma and grandpa but is this what you want yeah so that's the way it is is your issues went to I your daughter that. issues and then it goes into the granddaughter's issues mm -hmm. and and you can do a tremendous amount not a hundred percent but you can do a tremendous amount you just keep working on your issues and when you get down into that feeling then you feel your daughter and you see where they match and you solve it you resolve it Forgive yourself. Get that clear inside of you. See? Because then your daughter's still vibrating out of the guilt because of, you know, what happened back then. So right? that's what I was thinking yeah. when I left here. Yeah. I, I told her, I don't, I'm really, like, in other words, Tracy, I, as far as anything with Kelly or if I'm able to provide something, I've always been there, mm -hmm. but I can't be right now. Mm -hmm. It's between you and Daniel because there was something I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so she understood that. And she and I said, and I'll send you healing. That's what I told her. Yeah, yeah. And well, then you gave her the best message. I have to take care of myself. Right. I have to take care. Of, and and because remember, you're you're the mom going. I have to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to learn it. And then they're going to go. I have to take care. Maybe a year later, I have to take care of myself because that's what mom did. You see. Yeah. What a great gift. You could never get them to do their healing work on their own. But because mom's doing it, it's important to mom. I don't care. It's okay. So big bad things are happening now. But I, mom has to take care of herself. And then that gives them permission. It opens the door that they have to take care of their stuff. So they put the spoon in their own mouth. And that's how it works. That's the miracle of language lessons of the heart. And if you really do it, Right, you can right. you can That's heal three you'll you'll be able to heal three three generations yours, yours the daughter and the granddaughter three generations. That's what I when when I was there when we had that little we spent the whole day with the couple and you know I, uh, the other grandmother got to explain how her mom had never had you know touched her or because I give Kelly Reiki <laughs> she loves it and and that was my first thing when I was me and hers. 
let me calm you down and give you Reiki. And, mm -hmm. and when they, when she saw that, she said that. And I didn't give her information like, that's how this starts, you mm -hmm. know. You were, you, and she said, I couldn't be in the PTA. I couldn't do this with my kids. She said a teacher lived right next door. And, you know, she still had to go to work. Well, that's exactly what is wrong with Kelly's mom is those money is more important than the child. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you can change that because you're showing, first you show that I am, I am more important than money. Yeah? Right. I am more important than money. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then, then that gives the child a choice. But society says the world is more important, than, the money is more important thing in the world. But then you look at the mom and she's going, but mom, the heart is more important. Your soul is more important than money. And that gives the child a choice. And sooner or later, you have to choose your heart. You choose your soul. So you are being the gift that just mm -hmm. keeps on giving. Yeah. Just keeps on giving. And that's what I was going to do was with, Ke with Tracy is go home and do exactly, you know, I could go, I know we could go to her parents' house. She needs to release whatever. Yeah. Whatever is going on with her, because I, I know that, I probably did that with my sons, you know, the mistrust, and yeah. and I can see that this this with my boys that they like you said that this uh, discord, you know, there was like I didn't trust, mm -hmm. I didn't, uh, so they probably have that. Mm -hmm. Then they don't just trust. If you just trust, then then they they learn it too. Mm -hmm. Whatever they have my whatever, they, whatever they were fed, yeah. then they learn to feed this themselves. But the good news is, it doesn't matter how old they are. It doesn't matter how old you are. Once you change the pattern, That's the it. pattern changes. And then 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 like a, it, it's it's like a, a plant, the seed plants, and it grows. And it, it'll if you have a, a rose, sooner or later, maybe a few later, later they'll have the rose too. Yeah, because yeah? they're already looking at you. Look, she does Reiki, she does this, she goes Qigong, you know what I mean? And, 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 and it's like, so they're over there playing in the, you know, their wounded worlds doing their stuff, but in the back of their mind, look, look, what, look what grandma's doing, look what mom's doing, you know? This is the greatest gift, that's probably the best reason for doing, uh, you But you know. said don't do that with your... Well, just be an example for them, like. No, you, you heal. Now. You heal yeah. yourself. You okay. heal yourself, and that's the shining example. That's the tuning fork. As soon as you go away from yourself and start healing them, your tuning fork stops. Mm. Ah, and then it's just words, guilt, shame. You know, oh, you should do this, or you should do that. Yeah. yeah? And you can still do Reiki on them. Yeah, you yeah, can still do yeah. Reiki on. But but, like but when your tuning fork, which is your, this is your tuning fork, the body. The will, the heart, vibrating together, like they, like you say, they're all working together. That's the tuning fork, and that's what they need. They need to know that there's a perfect pitch. Uh, you know, you're still a normal person, but there's this pitch inside of like there's no heart hurting, there's no will and pain and suffering. They need people need to know that, and and there's nowhere out there, and there's not one person you can point to that goes, well, look, they're pretty much okay. You know what I mean? And that's the gift. That's the greatest gift. I'll share one more thing. My intention when I came, you know, that I made was to be able to to not get involved with um, other people until I uh, can heal me. I wanted to be able to speak it. Nice. I mean, exactly excellent. what you just said. <laughs> you know that. You got to heal you first, and yeah. that's the. I said I want to be able to sting it, uh, so they can do their work. Right. Not me, because I know what I what I what needs to happen with me is that I have to dyslexia. If it's there, mm -hmm. um, I got to patch that up yeah. for me. Yeah. And um, I didn't get to finish school. So, and I've been trying to finish school, and I need to patch that for mm -hmm. me. Not because everybody says um, you don't need an education. You don't. It's a pride thing. You want you want yeah. the pride to say I, I can actually do it. I'm not stupid. I can do it, and I believe you can do it. Me too. And and I I give you the because I was in the same boat. I was 20. 
I was 22 uh, years old and I was working as a carpenter for this guy who was a beekeeper. So he would, he would hire carpenters once in a while to go make a bunch of boxes for the bee boxes. You know, there's a lot of them that he was for a commercial bee guy. So I was making them. And if he was happened to be the, uh, the head of the psychology department for all of the schools in Day, in Day, in Day County. It was a big, one of the biggest schools, uh, things in the nation. So anyway, I was telling him about dyslexia and, uh, and, uh, so and he, he was telling me that, what, what dyslexia was and how it worked, and I didn't even know that's what it was. And I'd failed like the third grade and struggled on every, you know, failure after failure and putting in the stupid kids class and, you know, mm -hmm. but you're not stupid, you know. And I just love how you're saying no because you treasure that growing process so much, like you're dedicated to yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what I was looking for. That yeah, that yeah. part is behind me. You, yeah, you can't help anyone else to be right. whole. And I was codependent for a long time, and I think saying no, because it, it's easy to get wrapped up in other people's problems, so you don't have to deal with your own. <laughs> exactly. Can I, get a, can I get a hallelujah? Yeah, hallelujah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, and well, you could become a therapist. And oh, then, yeah. then you would have to deal with your, 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 your own issues ever again. Exactly. Yeah, you <laughs> but, uh, all that stuff. Yeah, you yeah. get compassion. Burn. <coughs> no, no, I think that's, you know, when people say, we well, need to learn to say no more often. But why? You know, and I think if you're saying no because you treasure your own personal growth, right? Mm -hmm. It's finally time for us to work on ourselves, right? We've been right. For, for so long. So I just, I just wanted to say that. I noticed that, and I think it's amazing. I think yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. It's all the stuff, all the people that I've been meeting, I mean, just once y'all make me cry, whatever that shame and guilt was, whatever, and let it go. <laughs> when yeah. Did, yeah, it's just amazing. that, and it is. I mean, it's amazing to have these two ladies on the Reiki table working on me <laughs> and let that go and then look where I'm at right now. Well, and, to hear. yeah, me and Julia both had to walk alone for a while. I mean, I was, you know, I kind of went on my own path and, but you know, we're never alone, but you know, you're like, yeah. okay, well, you kind of leave, leave, leave the groups that you were a part of and, you know, you're trying to forge a new path, but you're never alone and you, you know, it's just like traveling anywhere. You always pick up people. Your but tribe you, shows up when you start yeah. healing. There you go. Your tribe starts showing up when you start healing. Exactly. That's so true. Mm. Well, Thank I, you. I think Thank you, I think you. everybody I think everybody did amazing this weekend. I mean, yeah. oh my God, uh, there was this is not it's not it's it's very easy in some ways, but to put it all together it's so intense. you know it in your body. It takes it takes a three day workshop to yeah. do that. You know, to you know, grab just do it over and over again and build up and build up. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able to do it. Uh, you know, by yourself, you oh, know? Yeah. because that's the that's the other message. Uh, in in a roundabout, strange way, we did it to ourselves. Remember the big, we, our mother fed us, fed us, and then we we fed it to ourselves. So oh, in, in, in yeah. a strange roundabout way, we didn't know we were doing it, but we we fed the guilt, we fed the shame to ourselves, and so our healing has to be done for ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay to go to all kind of other modalities, but that's like going. Make me better, mommy. You know, you go to this healer or that healer to make me better, mommy. That's fine. Some, because they all have something to add. But when you take responsibility for the vibrations, the the energy, the memories, that stuff that doesn't need to carry on anymore, they're finished. It's finished. You know, like with a dog. When a dog gets hurt really badly, uh, you know, like something happens. They don't usually carry it for around for very long. If they're in a loving environment, then then they'll just they'll be okay, and that's it. But us, when we get hurt, we carry it for years and years and years because we don't know how to let go. We weren't we're not taught how to let go, how to release, and we're told don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't move your don't 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 make too, don't have too much fun, don't have too much joy, don't, don't you know don't make too much racket, you know. And it's always this, this subtle suppression, suppression, suppression. Yeah. So, 
in other cultures they have ways, other cultures they have parties or they have street dances or they have rituals or they have festivals and things like that. And that's and that the whole tribe, the whole village. Will we don't have that. We have YouTubes and stuff like that, and, <laughs> and we have suppression, and, and we have drugs to suppress and help us. Mother's little, mother's little helpers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alcohol, yeah. drugs, yeah. And, man, distractions. I think, I, I personally feel that uh, all three of you would make excellent teachers. Thank you. you not to, maybe not today, but in your own way. When you blossom, you have such powerful stories. Yeah. Powerful stories. And you have such powerful stories too. And it's just, you know, because this isn't too hard and everybody, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do a little Reiki practice, a little healing practice, then you can also do you know, little workshops. And you can see it works really good with three or four people, five people. Works good with 30, it's even easier with 30, 40 people. And the, and the way I did it, you know, the way, I, the way I'm doing it, uh, I have this on, on film. And you can see, once you understand the principles, it's like Simon says, okay, do this. And then everybody does it, right? And they explain a little bit about it. So it's actually the actual doing it is fairly easy to, 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 to run a workshop. And this is hardcore. This is, this is in my opinion, when this is, when this is done right uh, in, a, in a real formal setting, this is like, I don't, I don't think there is a, a more intensive workshop out there in the world right now. Have you ever heard of anything more intensive than this? And, and, and remember that uh, back in the day, what we got to today was what we did on the first day. That would be the first day, and then it goes deeper, right? Because when you have 15 or 20 or 30 people, you're going to have five or six women who are really letting go, and then that pulls up the energy for everybody, and everybody lets go, you see? And then you're, work then you're working on a level of truth from day one. Nobody's, nobody's pretending like it didn't happen. You know, when the paint peels off the wall, and, you know, that's usually a pretty good indication that something happened, you know, the floor tiles buckle because of so much energy. And, uh, you know, people's clothes, you know, yeah, it's pretty amazing stuff. This is, this is, the, this is what defines a, uh, an intensive workshop. Intensive it was. Indeed. <laughs> But it's loving too. But yeah, you know? just being your job's been easy. We've had the hard work. So <laughs> being a workshop leader is a piece of cake after actually doing the workshop. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And, uh, what a beautiful yeah. day today too. I'm so glad we got outside. I think so. So I guess I don't know if we should close it down unless I, I if you want to do the writing thing where we do the years. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good I, one. Let's let's do that. You want to come? You can go home anytime you want. Huh? <laughs> I'm not asking to go oh, home. No, I'm just teasing you. I'm poking you. Oh, I'm okay. Yeah, there's this, there's this other thing that's actually a good thing to do is, is uh, you get out your paper and write down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight nine, ten for as number of years that you have. Yeah, I tried doing that last night and my memory's yeah. just not good. Yeah, yeah oh. it doesn't have to be something you remember, like the year you were born. If you know something that happened that year. Yeah. Like my sister was jealous because I was born. That's what I put for 1961. I understood. You said, that, you said that yesterday. I was drawing yeah. upon that too. Well, here's, here's, the, here's, it's just an exercise. So you don't have to remember. So if you just get to the point where you can write down the 52 years or 49, whatever it is, write them down. And even if you have to put like a little square or something like you don't know, because then as you go along, but, but this gives your kind of your psyche to, to go back and say, oh, well, there's stuff, stuff happened at my birth. In, in reality, you need to go one year before your birth, like what was going on between my mother and father, or my mother and father in love, or my mother and father fighting, or my mother and father drinking. If you knew those kind of things before you were born, that, so then that's how you were conceived. And then the first year, second year, second, and so on, scarred school and, and seven or whatever it was, and all those 
and, you, and you just kind of put a, like a chronological order to it. Because what happens is, like today, as you do, as you do emotional release work, right, your memory comes back. Because most of what you don't remember was painful or just antagonistic or uncomfortable. So we're gonna. This is this is the land of uncomfortable. <laughs> we we go in. We dive into the uncomfortable to find the comfort. What a line that is! Let me write that down. We dive into the uncomfortable to find the comfort. Sure, one person can do it. Everyone can do it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a mime out of that. A meme. Meme. Be able to do it right you there, there too. No matter what. You need to get another hand out so you have the judgment. Yeah, I do. You. you want one of the judgment things? Yeah. I don't know why. Why have I not? Oh, you left it and I stuck it in the bag, so you probably have some more. Investing in my future, you see? Instead of instead of it's proof of my failure, I'm investing in my future. I'm so happy. What? Oh no, I was trying to I'm sorry. Don't go outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a second. 